torture and killing of prisoners by the Assad regime as peace talks on Syria's civil war hang in the balance. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's surprise invitation to Iran to join the so-called Geneva II conference this week threw Syria's opposition and the United States into an uproar. Now, more than 100,000 Syrians have been killed since the war started three years ago, and starvation stalks the land, according to the UN. As neither regime nor rebels muster sufficient military might for victory, settling into a grinding war of attrition, CNN, along with The Guardian newspaper, have received exclusive access to a devastating investigation by some of the most respected and experienced international prosecutors. They say, quote, there is clear evidence of systematic torture and killing of detained persons by the agents of the Syrian government. They say their source is a defector who had been in the Syrian military police, an insider they've codenamed Caesar, who smuggled out tens of thousands of graphic images of corpses emaciated and severely beaten. The six-member panel was made up of British and American lawyers who've been lead prosecutors in UN war crimes tribunals, as well as three forensic experts. Tonight, as we break the news of this report, three members of the panel join me to discuss the evidence and its consequences. Chairman of the legal team, Sir Desmond De Silva, who was former chief prosecutor of the Special Court for Sierra Leone. Sir Geoffrey Nice, former lead prosecutor in the trial of ex-president Milosevic of Yugoslavia at the War Crimes Tribunal in The Hague, and Dr. Stuart Hamilton, a UK forensic pathologist. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. Good evening. This is indeed devastating reading and devastating viewing when we see the pictures. Let me ask you first, Sir Desmond, as chairman, what was your mandate? What were you asked to do? Uh, it was an inquiry into reliability. Uh, the London firm of Carter Ruck, uh, asked me to put a team together for the purpose of investigating the reliability, the reliability of, a, uh, of a defector from uh, Syria, uh, who I understood brought with him or had, had a, could comment on some 55,000 images of people who had been tortured and killed. And are you convinced of the reliability of the defector codenamed Caesar? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Uh, sufficiently so. Uh, I think all of us were in agreement that his, uh, his account was uh, essentially true. Uh, it had the hallmarks of truth, and it would stand up in a court. And let me be very clear. Who funded this investigation? The solicitors who instructed me were funded by the government of Catha. So the question to you then is, given the fact that they are well-known supporters of the opposition, were you or any of your team concerned that there might be a political motive behind their hiring of you, behind this investigation? Well, ultimately, the validity of our conclusions turn on the integrity of the people involved. All right. I begin by saying that. We, the team, were very conscious of the fact that there are competing interests in the Syrian crisis, uh, both national and international. We're very conscious of that. I certainly, and I'm sure this goes for all the others, we approached our task with a certain amount of scepticism, bearing that in mind. Okay. We had no wish to be made, I certainly had no wish that this um, inquiry was a vehicle for propagating some for one particular point of view or another. Then let me go straight to these images and to Stuart Hamilton, who is the scientist who looked at these things. We've seen these horrendous images, figure number one, yes. according to your report and how you list them. I mean, this is reminiscent of the most horrific state of affairs, crimes that we've seen in history. Tell me, tell me what this is. I mean, this is, in essence, a person who has been starved. They, you can see quite clearly how prominent the ribs are, the loss of muscle mass. This is not just somebody who's thin or somebody who maybe hasn't had enough food because there's a war going on. This is somebody who's been really starved. And, and would you say starved to death? It's quite possible. Uh, you, without a more detailed analysis like looking at the body, you can't be sure. But starvation is a very reasonable cause of death for a body like that. So let's get now to image number nine, yes. which is what? I mean, obviously, to me, it looks like this man's been beaten terribly. And that's exactly what's happened. He has been beaten terribly. 
You can see the tramline bruises, which to a forensic pathologist are characteristic of repeated blows with a rod-like object. You can see that they're parallel. This person hasn't been moving as these strikes land, and they go up and down his torso. In addition, he's very thin, and he's got bruises on his neck. He's been savagely beaten. The next set of pictures are what you list as image four and image five. This shows what you talk about, strangulation. And if I might just point out, we have in this display here a type of strangulation that comes with marks, with ridges. And if we move to the next picture, we will see the device, apparently, that caused those images. Tell me what you thought when you saw this. When you see this, it's very characteristic of a strangulation. The position, not hanging. Not hanging. The position on the neck is incorrect for hanging. You should have a mark that rises on the neck, up to the rear of the neck, if somebody has been hanged. This is a strangulation, and it's got a very clear pattern to it, which anyone looking at that can see, which suggests that a particular implement may have been used. And then several images later, looking at a different person, we have this image of somebody with this belt of some kind around his neck. You can see the ridges on it. And you can see that is what caused that, that, yes. that, that image on his neck. Yes, it doesn't take a forensic pathologist to, to see, figure put it out. those two together. Ex exactly. Awful, awful, awful. And the next picture that we're going to show is uh, the final picture for us is figure eight, <coughs> where again you see beating, but specifically you see several bodies. So it, it lends itself to what when you saw that? I mean, the, this is something systematic. There are images that I have seen of bodies lined up um, in their dozens and you can see that there's somebody who's beaten, beaten, and you can see next to them somebody who's got injuries on their arm. This is, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things have happened to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Did you, you obviously only looked at the images. Yes. How many of these 55,000 images did you look at? We had a short time frame, so I've seen about 5,500 images. It averages about four images per body, so that works out in the order of 1,300 deceased persons. Mm -hmm. And you saw, again, beating, starvation and strangulation. Beating was relatively common. Starvation, disturbingly common. Evidence of um, strangulation was there for all to see. He's the scientist, Geoffrey Nice. He's the expert who looked at it forensically. What conclusion did you come to? Who did this? Who ordered this? If you have this number of bodies, probably in the order of 11,000 plus, if the 50,000 images are all consistent, as we understand them to be and as our scientists show them to be, if you have 11,000 bodies dealt with in a systematic way, brought from one place to another, where they were photographed with identifying marks to enable the authorities to know that the people have been killed, to allow the authorities to give spurious explanations for the deaths of the people and to satisfy the authorities that people have been executed, then you can reasonably infer that this is a pattern of behavior which has to have higher authority. So would you say that this is the first direct evidence of various elements of the regime engaged in mass killing? I can't say whether it's the first. I can say that on the basis that we were approaching the evidence, not as judges and final arbiters, but to assess whether the evidence would be capable of proving something, that this is evidence that would be capable of proving responsibility for organized and mass killing by the higher authorities in the regime. And this, you say that very powerfully, therefore this would stand up in a tribunal of any type? In our judgment, there's no reason to doubt, from what we've seen, either the evidence coming from human beings or more perhaps particularly the evidence coming from the experts, which is outside our particular field of expertise. Gentlemen, we're going to talk about the defector, Caesar. The code name is Caesar. When we